Hey everybody, this is Corey Huff with The Abundant Artist, and I am here today with artist Tara Reed, who uh, runs the website Art Licensing Info, and uh, I'm very excited to have you here, Tara. Uh, thanks for joining us. Well, thank you. Thank yeah. you for your patience in getting me here. <laughs> no problem. It's an adventure. <laughs> well, it, it, your technology, <laughs> yay. Um, okay, so for those of you who somehow, some way don't know Tara, um, I'm very flattered that she agreed to, to come and be a guest on the blog because Tara is like a, she's like big time. Um, she knows everything there is to know about art licensing and um, she, the, her awesome blog uh, taught me pretty much everything I know about art licensing and uh, can probably teach you everything you might need to know about art licensing. And uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about what art licensing is, uh, how that can benefit your art career and uh, anything else that comes up. So Tara, should we, should we jump right in? Oh yeah, no pressure with that intro. <laughs> I know everything. What in the world is art licensing? Art licensing is a quirky little way, I guess not quirky little way, but it's one of many zillion ways to make money with art. Mm -hmm. um, basically, you do it through the use of contracts Mm -hmm. And you create art, and then you find manufacturers who make stuff. That's when people don't try and understand what I do. I say I make art for stuff that you can buy in stores. Uh -huh. It's some of them still think I make business cards, but you know it's the best way to describe it. So basically, I sit in my studio and I create art collections, and then I connect with manufacturers who need art to put on their products, and it can be anything from plates to garden flags to floor mats to dishes to I mean anything what's the craziest thing you've ever had your art put on um probably tissues like that you can blow your nose in my <laughs> I, 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 I went through something one time like you can you know you can eat out of my art you can drink from my art you can keep your wine with my art, you can get drunk with my art, you can wipe your feet on my art, I mean, just a little bit of everything. So your art is part of people's everyday lives. That's pretty yes. cool, actually. Yeah, it's, it's very fun. I love going to stores and visiting my art, as I say. Especially when I don't expect it to be there. You walk in and you're like, oh my gosh, I painted that! Different kinds of art can, can match up their art with, di with different product manufacturers and make a bunch of money by selling those people a license to use their art? Yes. We usually don't say selling. Mm -hmm. there, that's one thing that's really confusing about art licensing is you're not really selling. It's more like renting. Oh, cool. Okay. So, so like, um, you know, I, I like to use pie as an analogy. So if you like to bake pie, you can do a couple things with your pie. You can sell your whole pie mm -hmm. and then you have no more pie and you got to go make more pie. So if you're an artist who, who sells their art, you're going to sell your art, you don't have anything left, and now you need to go create new art in order to make more money. Sure. Um, in licensing, it's more like selling your pie by the piece, but you even get it back, but it's not as gross as getting pie back. So you, like, if, you're, if you do a Christmas collection and you consider it a pie, people who sell their art outright might sell that art to a company who makes gift wrap. Right. Now that company owns it. They own the copyrights. They can change the colors. They everything. They've given you a certain amount of money, which you get up front, which is kind of cool. But then you just go on and, and create new art. But in licensing, I create my Christmas art and I choose to license it. So I basically say, okay, everyone, I have this collection. This is what it is. What do you want to use it for? And so we use a contract and I say, okay, Corey, well, if you make wrapping paper, you have the rights to use this art on wrapping paper. You know, nobody else is going to put it on wrapping paper for the next two years in the United States. But then somebody else might use it in Europe. I think I'm a little lost. Um, and, uh, so, so, I mean, you're doing a great job, but uh, this is all new to me and I'm sure it's new to people who might be watching this. So, yes. Basically, a company would write a contract with you, uh -huh. and the, in the contract, you both agree that, and, and it's written out in some sort of legalese that oh, yeah. says... Uh, Artists love that part, too. <laughs> so I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm only going to use your art in these ways for this time in these places, yes. and, uh, and you both sign it, and, yes. uh, and, and you abide by that contract, and, and you exchange money. Correct. Okay. And right. so how in the world? So then I, the, here's the beautiful part. Mm -hmm. So because you slice and dice it through a contract, I'm still free to take the same Santa Claus 
that you're going to put on wrapping paper mm -hmm. and license it to somebody else to put on tissues and to somebody else to put on paper plates and to somebody else to put on ceramic plates and to somebody else to put on wall art and to somebody else to put on stickers. Like, it's endless. How lucrative can licensing be? It sounds like it can be pretty lucrative. You can make, like, $5 to millions of dollars a year. It You know, there's... It, that's a really, really hard question to answer. I mean, Mary Englebright, Thomas Kincaid, Susan Wingett, they're all making very, very big numbers because they're very well-known brands, they're very established, they have a big consumer base. There are other people who are licensing their art that are making really, really good money as well, you know, like six figures, and you may never know what their name is because they may be licensing their designs like to Target and it just has a Target label on it. So. Sometimes you'll license your art and you don't get that recognition. Like your signature isn't on it, you're doing you're private label. Some private label will have your name and your brand and some won't. It depends on what you agree to. Right. Um, you know, there's people that are doing it very part-time. You know, maybe they're making a couple hundred, a couple thousand. I would say, you know, the artists that are in, you know, that are that are making a living, you know, like me, that have been in the business my best guess because we all don't sit around and compare our royalty checks and it can really vary from year to year I mean I think if you're doing well if you're making 40 to 100 thousand so you can make a living at this it isn't super easy money it isn't like oh I'm gonna make five things license it in the next 10 years I'm all set it's not that at all how do I get target to license my art that might be a little too big give me <laughs> <laughs> Never. Aim for the stars. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a there's a variety of ways to find companies that license art. Um, I have done really well with trade shows. I mean, I, I don't know if people don't know me. I do not have an art education background. I have a degree in marketing. Mm -hmm. And I used to sell college textbooks before I was a stay-at-home crafty mom. For cool. So, yeah, like totally... <laughs> It always blows people's mind. They're like, you did what? I'm like, yeah, I really liked it too. My dad was a college teacher and I loved school, so I was always very comfortable there. Much prefer what I'm doing now. Um, but because I, you know, I don't have a problem talking to people, I just kind of did the whole trade show thing and I build relationships really well in person. And so 75 to 80% of my business, I can track back to either exhibiting at or going to a an industry trade show. So, um, you know, it's not an inexpensive thing, but I go to New York every May, I set up my shingle, uh -huh. my 10 foot 10 booth, and that's where I meet a lot of the people that I work with. Um, some people don't choose to do that, they're not comfortable doing that, they don't have the budget to do that, so there's other ways to go as well. There are a lot of agents in the industry, so if people just really don't want to do the business side, like they're super shy or they're super intimidated by it or they just truly want to be in their pajamas painting all the time and not deal with all the other or stuff. they want to keep their art pure and unsullied from commercial... Well, <laughs> find an agent and then it's their job to make those connections for you between your art and the manufacturers. And then one of my favorite things, and it's you've heard of shopping, uh, shopping therapy, I assume. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's called shopping research and it doesn't cost you anything. Oh. To the stores, and I'm not going to use my glass I was drinking out of because I don't want to dump water on the table. But you go to the store and you find something, right? And you're like, oh, that's really pretty. And you go like this. Of course, my example has nothing on the bottom. But a lot of products have, you know, the manufacturer on the bottom. Right. And so you take a picture of it or you write it down and then you go back to the internet and you look up that company and you try and figure out if they license art. And so that's how I have found some of my clients as well. Some wow. of them, you'll go to their website and it'll say artist submissions. So that's awesome because they tell you how they want to talk to you to begin with. Others, they might just show artists that like once you learn more about the industry, you get a feel for who's in it. Mm -hmm. So you know like, oh, well, if Paul Brent's art is on their product, do they license art? Because he doesn't sell art, he only licenses art. So shopping research is also wonderful. Earlier we were talking about contracts. Yes. And, and just the idea of, so I used to, in another, in my previous uh, professional career, I uh, sold huge software contracts. Um, I worked for a company that sold uh, software and, you know, big international companies with 
crazy, you know, 20 page contracts in teeny tiny font. Yeah. And, um, and you know, when the kind of, when, when we would give them our standard contract and then they would make a bunch of changes and hand it back to us and, and, and I'd go, uh, lawyer. <laughs> right. So for an artist who maybe doesn't have a lawyer or can't afford to, you know, ha keep a lawyer on retainer, uh, what do you do? Um, you know, contracts are part of, of this business and you do need to understand them. The beauty, the beautiful thing is you don't always have to have an attorney. We have um, another artist and I wrote an ebook called How to Understand Art Licensing Contracts. And okay. so it goes through all of the pieces. Like, you know, this is, this is what you want in every single contract. Like you want, how long does the contract last? Where are they gonna sell the products? What products, what art? Just like the real basics. The who, what, where, when, why, how. Yeah, and then it goes into all the other things that you might find and why it may or may not be important. Because depending on how you're building your business, how big of a deal it is, like some things might or might not be important. I have worked off of contracts that are one page long to 12 pages long. And what's what I think is really important, and Maria is the co-author of it too, what, what our message is to people is, A, you need to understand what they are. You can't cry, I'm an artist, I can't understand it, because it's really important to your business to at least understand it, even if you don't take control of the whole thing. Sure. Um, when I first started, I had a friend who used to do contract negotiation, and she helped me learn. You basically have to learn to put on this hat that is the doom and gloom worst case scenario hat. And you read each paragraph, and you go, okay, worst case scenario. So say, say like, this is my mug. This is my art on the mug. In my contract, I indemnify this manufacturer against the art. So if anybody sues me and says I stole this art, they can't sue them. Right. But they have to indemnify me against any issue with this mug. Because just because my art is on it, here's the worst case scenario. Some three-year-old bashes their two-year-old sister over the head with it. She's terribly injured. And the parents decide to sue. I don't want to be sued because my design's on it. Right. You know, so if there's a product flaw, that needs to be on them. So that kind of stuff has to be in your contract. It's really important. Mm -hmm. You go, okay, what's the worst thing that could happen and make sure I've protected myself. Um, and then also learning when you should invest in an attorney. So if you're doing a deal where all you're doing is one design, you know, or three designs on a set of six mugs, you know, how much are you going to make from that? How, how many mugs are they going to make? They might make so, um, enough mugs for you to make $600. If you think you're only going to make $600 on the deal, you do not want to pay an attorney $400 an hour to review the contract and you know back and forth. Right. If you start doing a deal with a company, and I, I had one one time with a company that was for an entire industry. So I was going to exclusively work with this company and they were in Canada for kitchen textiles. Well that is a lot of stuff and it was for three years. So if that didn't work right or that contract wasn't well written, that could really affect my business. Mm -hmm. So it, definitely worth me hiring somebody to put second eyes on it and make sure I wasn't going to. So it's kind of like how much could this affect your business and your livelihood? And the bigger that is, the more you should get a consultant or an attorney. And there are non-attorney consultants as well as attorneys that work in the industry. Art has the power to sell things. Yes. Right. Art um, takes people and, and grabs their emotions and, and makes them want to do something or makes them feel a certain way yeah and um and now i'm getting up on my soapbox but uh, i just I, I i i artists need to understand this that there's power in what they do right yeah and, and i mean that's why licensing exists because if people only bought coffee mugs because they needed something to put a drink in they'd be done we'd like all, I, we'd all have one mug yeah. per person in our house and be done yeah, and be yeah. done. But, you know, like somebody's going to buy this because they're going to be like, oh, my God, I love zebra print. I'm redoing my kitchen in black and white. I need it. Or, or they connect with the saying or, you know, it's Father's Day and it's got a mustache on it. And mustaches are hot now. So let me buy that mug for dad. You know, and in two years, they're not hot anymore. We'll give that to Salvation Army. We'll get something else. You know, it just it sells the product. Mm -hmm. That's our role. Yeah. So can we go back a little bit to getting muddy? Getting, you know, muddy. Yes. getting yes. muddy. Talk to me about that. Because we have to get muddy. Yes. If 
you want to be in this business, you have to be okay with getting muddy. Um, perfect case in point this morning, you know, like chalkboard, really popular right now. The, if you're on Pinterest at all, you see chalkboard stuff everywhere. So I've been playing a little bit with, you know, the chalkboard trend with art that I like. And so I did this one thing and I sent it, um, sent it to one of my clients who does wall art. And I'm like, okay, here's, I think this might be cool. It's kind of a combination of chalkboard and folksy. And she sends me back. She goes, it's a cool idea, but it's too dark. I want a white background. I want brighter yellow. I want a lime green. Like it basically, okay, you like the image, but nothing else about it. So I just, I, you know, it constantly, it is so rare to show somebody something and then say, perfect, send it over. There's almost always a change, you know, 90 to 95% of the time there's a change. Mm -hmm. In this particular case, I pretty much said, okay, you like the theme, <laughs> but you don't like how I did it, but I'm going to finish doing it this way, see how it goes. And then I'll let you know when I do a lighter, brighter mm -hmm. version of the theme. So, you know, you definitely, and I think that's why I love this industry is because, you know, my brain is so mixed. I'm so, like, I love to be creative, but I love business. And so I love that combination of what's going to sell. Like, what do I feel like creating and what does the market need and what hasn't somebody done yet and what can I do? And it's just like, it's just like cool. Yep. Yeah. And you can look at it as a form of collaboration, I guess. Yes. Yeah, my best partners and the ones I enjoy the most are the ones that I get to know. What are the questions that I failed to ask that you think I should have asked? Oh. Hmm. How long does it take to make money? Ooh, that's a great question. How long does it take to make money, Tara? It takes a while. Okay. You know, that's a really important question um, because, you know, Art licensing, you have to, you can't need money for your next cell phone bill and think you're going to get it from art licensing because you're absolutely not. Um, on my blog, on the FAQ page, there is a, a thing, you know, how long does it take to make money? And I call it the cash flow cycle of licensing. So if we go in our perfect world, so I just was working on this collection this morning of art and I'll finish it probably tomorrow and I'll start sending it out to a couple of the clients that I work with all the time. One or two of them might be like, oh, yeah, we like it. Send us the files. We'll mock something up and see what happens. So I've done the art. They're now going to consider it. Um, a lot of what goes on in the industry now um, that's a little different than 10 years ago is they shop your art. So they might show it to some of their key accounts. They might show it to a big account like Bed Bath & Beyond or whatever. They often won't commit to you until they know they're going to have decent placement. Right little different than in, in years past so they have to mock stuff up they have to show it to people then okay it's beautiful somebody wants it so then you're gonna do the the contract so if I've never worked with them before we have to start from scratch if it's a company I've worked from we have a basic contract we'll do an amendment where we add okay yeah now you're licensing this art in mm -hmm. addition to what you've already done in the past so always have to do the contract thing um, then they have to produce it they have to you know, sell it if it's going into like mom and pop stuff where they have to get ship it, whatever. It can take, um, I think nine months is the shortest amount of time between when I finished something and when it had shipped and you don't get paid until the quarter after it ships, which is why I love July. Cause I'm like, yay, quarter ended in June. Money's going to start coming in. Got to be good at cash flow. You get paid four times a year from most of your companies. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, I have like two that pay me monthly, and every other company, it's quarterly. Wow. Tell me a little bit more about the resources you have. So, obviously, there's a lot that goes into licensing. There's a lot you need to learn. Yes. Um, you have some ebooks and, and other things. Um, where would you recommend that somebody get started uh, with your resources if they want to get started? Um, you know, I would say... If somebody just emails me out of the blue, I always send them to the blog first because it has links to all of the products, you know, that you can buy. But there's a ton of free information on there. 
Um, another thing that I do that is really helpful to people is every other month I do, I don't know if you've participated in any of those, an ask with a K, my mm -hmm. mom's telling me I sound like I'm saying, but call. And basically it's either me or another expert in the industry. An artist submit questions and then I organize them the week before the call and it's free if artists listen live. And so we've had everyone from, you know, Mary Englebright, last week we had Agent Lilla Rogers on, Paul Brent's done, you know, many of them. We've had attorneys, we've had WordPress, you know, website people, we've had SEO people, we've had a couple other agents, like so many different people involved in this industry. So you're not only getting my experience, because my experience that I can share is just my experience, um, but you're getting ex the the perspectives and experience of a lot of different people that have done really well in the industry and so um, th they're always free to listen live and they are at our askaboutartlicensing.com askaboutartlicensing.com yes okay there's a tab that says free replays and there are about 15 hours of free audios that people can download because what I do is the first call I do with any expert is always free forever Mm -hmm. If they come back and do another one, then we charge a nominal fee for the replay just to help support the whole thing and have people come back. Thank you so much. This has been super informative, and I think everybody who watches it will think it's really informative as well. So I hope so, and I hope I didn't overwhelm everybody. I know I just like, Whoa! No, 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 no. This is great. This is uh, a great introduction to art licensing, so thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks so much. Have a good day. You too. And part of why I started doing what I'm doing on the information side and teaching and blogging other than I like to talk um, is it's really important to me for people to understand what the day-to-day -day business looks like because there's so many ways to make money with art and this is not going to be a fit for everyone.